This is a little poem I wrote called Cleaning Up in COVID Times. John was sitting on the veranda, watching the rain. He liked the sound of it as it trickled down the drain. He thought to himself, what can I do with all my spare time? He suddenly remembered his filthy oven and said, I know, I'll clean off all that grime. Went to Bunnings and bought all his cleaning gear. He um, put it in his car and then suddenly cried a tear. The tyre on his old car had gone flat, so he wasn't going anywhere soon, and that was that. He opened the boot to retrieve his trusty jack. As he was getting out, he heard what sounded like clickety-clack. The jack fell apart in a rusty heap and fell on the ground, and as he was picking up the pieces, he was visited by a hound. The owner of the dog soon arrived. His name was Fred. John, on looking up, had a feeling of dread. Fred gave John a friendly smile and said, Fancy a walk? John, a little nervous but curious, said, Yeah, let's get a coffee whilst we talk. As they were sitting in the coffee shop, they were ready to place their order, but then suddenly a waiter ran up and said, Excuse me, sirs, you cannot cross our border. This is absurd, Fred said in a, an angry glare. Fred disappeared from the shop, obviously not COVID aware. John walked back to his car to fix the tyre. It was a long walk back and his shirt became wet with perspire. He phoned the NRMA to fix the car and whilst he was waiting, he heard a noisy galah. Ah, the freedom of birds. They have a good life. Just as he was daydreaming, he got a call from his wife. How's your day going? Marge said. Oh, Marge, my car's got a flat, and it may need a towin'. As if on cue, the council truck arrived and towed poor John's car away. Hey, wait a bit, mate. My car's got a flat, and I'm waiting for the NRMA. The council worker explained to John of the COVID parking one-hour parking restriction. Oh, come on, mate. Can't you see my car's suffering a major affliction? Tough, said the council worker, and handed John a fine. Of $496. John thought of this angrily, but not angrily. He thought of it actually as a sign. He decided to continue on his cleaning mission and boarded the bus. He got off at his stop with a minimum of fuss, went to the newsagent to buy the paper and gave it a casual read. He was nearing his home and he shouted out to Marge, I'm dying for a feed. He dropped the coins from his change on the kitchen bench and he didn't care where they fell, but he really enjoyed the smell of his wife's cooking. He thought it smelled really, really swell. Marge said to John, I think our luck's turning. Look what I found. Of the coins that John had dumped on the kitchen bench, one had fallen on the ground. It was a 1930 penny. It was worth a ton of dough. John stopped what he's doing, grabbed the coins, and said he had to go. He then grabbed an Uber ride to where his car was taken. He was feeling much happier and felt like he wasn't forsaken. The $40,000 my coin is worth will help me pay my bills. He was feeling pretty confident as he drove over the bumpy hills. He got to the Barara Waters Ferry and drove his car on board. He got out of the car to stretch his legs and smiled, thinking about his hoard. The coin dealer he was off to see would surely pay him a lot. He then suddenly got a phone call. It was his friend Lancelot. As John said hello, he heard a metal thing hit the wooden deck. He quickly turned around real fast and shouted, What the heck? His precious little coin was rolling fast towards the drink, but he could do nothing more, and all he could do was watch it glug, glug, sink.